So this was the big story this week, a uh, huge story this week, huge bombshell report by ProPublica. Israel deliberately blocked humanitarian aid to Gaza, two government bodies concluded. Antony Blinken rejected them. So this is the ProPublica report that is all the talk uh, this week. The U.S. government's two foremost authorities on humanitarian assistance concluded this spring that Israel had deliberately blocked deliveries of food and medicine into Gaza. The U.S. Agency for International Development delivered its assessment to Secretary of State Antony Blinken and the State Department's Refugees Bureau made its stance known to top diplomats in late April. Their conclusion was explosive because U.S. law requires the government to cut off weapon shipments to countries that prevent the delivery of U.S.-backed humanitarian aid. Israel has been largely dependent on American bombs and other weapons in Gaza since Hamas's October 7th attacks. But Blinken and the administration of President Joe Biden did not accept either finding. Days later, on May 10th, Blinken delivered a carefully worded statement to Congress that said, We do not currently assess that the Israeli government is prohibiting or otherwise restricting the transport or delivery of U.S. humanitarian assistance. Prior to his report, USAID had sent Blinken a detailed 17-page memo on Israel's conduct. The memo described instances of Israeli interference with aid efforts, including killing aid workers, raising agricultural structures, bombing ambulances and hospitals, sitting on supply depots, and routinely turning away trucks full of food and medicine. So the level of detail in these reports... Uh, is impressive and unmistakable, which is what makes this story as damning as it is. Life-saving food was stockpiled less than 30 miles across the border in an Israeli port, including enough flour to feed about 1.5 million Palestinians for five months, according to the memo. But in February, the Israeli government had prohibited the transfer of flour, saying its recipient was the United Nations Palestinian branch, that had been accused of having ties with Hamas. I'm assuming that means UNRWA. It doesn't spell that out specifically in the report, but that is what I assume that means since we know that they made that charge. Separately, the head of the State Department's Bureau of Population, Refugees, and Migration had also determined that Israel was blocking humanitarian aid and that the Foreign Assistance Act should be triggered to freeze almost $830 million in taxpayer dollars earmarked for weapons and bombs to Israel, according to emails obtained by ProPublica. The USAID officials wrote that because of Israel's behavior, the U.S. should pause additional arms sales to the country. ProPublica obtained a copy of the agency's April memo along with the list of evidence that the officials cited to back up their findings. USAID, which is led by longtime diplomat Samantha Power, said the looming famine in Gaza was the result of Israel's arbitrary denial restriction, and impediments of U.S. humanitarian assistance, according to the memo. It also acknowledged Hamas had played a role in the humanitarian crisis. USAID, which receives overall policy guidance from the Secretary of State, is an independent agency responsible for international development and disaster relief. The agency had for months tried and failed to deliver enough food and medicine to a starving and desperate Palestinian population. It is, USAID concluded, one of the worst humanitarian catastrophes in the world. The USAID memo was an indication of a deep rift within the Biden administration on the issue of military aid to Israel. In March, the U.S. ambassador to Israel, Jack Lew, sent Blinken a cable arguing that Israel's war cabinet, which includes Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yov Gallant, should be trusted to facilitate aid shipments to the Palestinians. Lou acknowledged that other parts of the Israeli government have tried to impede the movement of humanitarian assistance, according to a copy of his cable obtained by ProPublica, but he recommended continuing to provide military assistance because he had assessed that Israel will not arbitrarily deny, restrict, or otherwise impede U.S.-provided or supported shipments of food and medicine. In the months leading up to that cable, Lou had been told repeatedly about instances of the Israelis blocking humanitarian assistance, according to four U.S. officials familiar with the embassy operations, but, like others quoted in this story, not authorized to speak about them. Quote, 
No other nation has ever provided so much humanitarian assistance to their enemies, Lou responded to subordinates at the time, according to two of the officials who said the comments drew widespread consternation. That put people over the edge, one of the officials told ProPublica. He'd be a great spokesperson for the Israeli government. A second official said Lou had access to the same information as USAID leaders in Washington. In addition to evidence collected by the local State Department, diplomats working in Jerusalem, but his instincts are to defend Israel, said a third official. Okay, so we're going to read. We have a lot more to this, but I'll just pause there. So you see, they put a guy like Jack Lew in there, who is yep. a diehard Zionist, in order to provide the counter to the agency's findings so that when Blinken goes up and lies and says they're not blocking aid, he can point to this guy, well, I had conflicting information. Meanwhile, right. this Jack right. Lew had access to the same information that USAID had access to. His job is to just shill for Israel so that Blinken yep. can say, well, yep. I had two different opinions in my ear and I had to pick one. Right. That's what right. that's there for. Right. That's the only right. reason he's there. Right. So when Count Morlock <laughs> goes up on stage and says there's an investigation ongoing, we're waiting to find out the conclusion. He's lying to you. The investigation has been done. It's been concluded. And they know damn well that based on U.S. law, they're not supposed to be sending weapons and money to this country. They know that. Exactly. All right, we'll continue. The question of whether Israel was impeding humanitarian aid has garnered widespread attention. Before Blinken's statement to Congress, Reuters reported concerns from USAID about the death toll in Gaza, which now stands at about 42,000, and that some officials inside the State Department, including the Refugees Bureau, had warned him that the Israelis' assurances were not credible. The existence of USAID's memo, Lou's Cable, and their broad conclusions were also previously reported. But the full accounting of USAID's evidence, the determination of the Refugees Bureau in April, and the statements from experts at the embassy, along with Lou's decision to undermine them, reveal new aspects of the striking split within the Biden administration and how the highest-ranking American diplomats have justified his policy of continuing to flood Israel with arms over the objections of their own experts. Stacey Gilbert a former senior mil, uh, I'm sorry, a former senior civil military advisor in the Refugees Bureau who had been working on drafts of Blinken's report to Congress resigned over the language in the final version. There is abundant evidence showing that Israel is responsible for blocking aid, she wrote in a statement shortly after leaving, which the Washington Post and other outlets reported on. To deny this is absurd and shameful. That report and its flagrant untruths will haunt us. The State Department's headquarters in Washington did not always welcome that kind of information from U.S. experts on the ground, according to a person familiar with the embassy operations. That was especially true when experts reported the small number of aid trucks being allowed in. A lot of times they would not accept it because it was lower than what the Israelis said, the person told ProPublica. The sentiment from Washington was, we want to see the aid increasing because Israel told us it would. So we'll take a quick game break here. And we'll hear from Stacey Gilbert. This was an interview that she gave to Democracy Now! back in May after resigning based on the fact that the State Department was essentially covering up the deliberate blockage of aid. So this is a couple minutes of that interview. I was working on this report with many others. There were a handful of us who were very, very engaged in every sentence of that. Um, but at some point, we were removed from that report, and it was moved up to a higher level to be written and edited and cleared. Um, so I, even though I had worked on this pretty heavily since this directive from the White House came out in early February, I did not know what was in the report until it came out. That said, I was actually hopeful that it would be a honest report, because earlier that week, the White House had made an announcement that it was going to pause the 2,000-pound bombs that are have really caused disproportionate destruction in Gaza. So they had announced a pause on that. And I was actually pretty hopeful that maybe this report was going to be honest. So when the report came out on May 10th, um, late in the day, I read it. And I had to reread it because I couldn't believe what it said. 
it said very clearly it it actually so on those two points I was surprised on the point about Israel's adherence to international humanitarian law for the first time I'm aware of we admitted in very very weak terms but we admitted that Israel is likely using US weapons in violation of international humanitarian law I was surprised that was that was a step forward in admitting that I was shocked however that it also went on to say that Israel it is our assessment that Israel is not blocking humanitarian assistance that is not that is not the view of subject matter experts at the State Department at USAID nor among the humanitarian community and that was known that was absolutely known to the administration for a very long time not just within the government but having received reports and letters from organizations on the ground in Gaza organizations the US government funds credible organizations saying Israel is blocking humanitarian assistance so there, there you have it <clears throat> from her that was back in May. Um, now the US gives the Israeli government about 3.8 billion dollars every year as a baseline and significantly more during wartime money the Israelis use to buy American made bombs and equipment Congress and the executive branch have imposed legal guardrails on how Israel and other partners can use that money one of them is the Foreign Assistance Act the humanitarian aid portion of the law is known as 620i which dates back to Turkey's embargo of Armenia during the 1990s that part of the law has never been widely implemented but this year advocacy groups and some Democrats in Congress brought it out of obscurity and called for Biden to use 620i to pressure the Israelis to allow aid freely into Gaza in response the Biden administration announced a policy called the National Security Memorandum or NSM 20 to require the State Department to vet Israel's assurances about whether it was blocking aid and then report its findings to lawmakers if Blinken determined this is a very key sentence if Blinken determined the Israelis were not facilitating aid and were instead arbitrarily restricting it as was literally the exact quote that this yes. is an arbitrary restriction of aid <clears throat> from the report itself <clears throat> excuse me then the government would be required by the law to halt military assistance Blinken submitted the agency's official position on May 10th siding with who Lou the guy who was put there to give plausible deniability to Blinken yeah. Yeah. which meant that the military support would continue so you could just put a hack in there who will say anything sure no matter what right. the information right. is and then Blinken gets to say well I took his word for it and you know so not only is that malfeasance on Blinken's part but as we know from this report and these findings Lou is just a straight up liar right just like Blinken right. is because he had access right. to the same information that the agencies had access to and he saw their findings um almost done in Blinken in its memo to Blinken USAID also cited numerous publicly reported incidents in which aid facilities and workers were hit by Israeli airstrikes even sometimes after they had shared their locations with the IDF and received approval a process known as deconfliction wow the Israeli government has maintained that most of these incidents were mistakes right USAID found the Israelis often promised to take adequate measures to prevent such incidents but frequently failed to follow through on November 18th for instance a convoy of aid workers was trying to evacuate along a route assigned to them by the IDF the convoy was denied permission to cross a military checkpoint despite previous IDF authorization then while en route to back back to their uh, facility the IDF opened fire on the aid workers killing two of them and that is the conclusion world's most moral army folks yep that is the conclusion of the report and so this was big news this week and so Anthony Blinken went on the CBS uh, morning show and was asked about this and uh, here's his response 
ProPublica has determined that two agencies found that Israel is deliberately stopping humanitarian aid from getting to civilians. And as you well know, the U.S. government says that it has to restrict supplying weapons to a country that does this type of thing. Why have we not done so? Yeah. So this is actually uh, pretty, pretty typical. We had a report to put out on the humanitarian situation uh, in, in Gaza and uh, what Israel was doing to try to make sure that people got the assistance they, they needed. And I had different um, assessments from different parts of the State Department, uh, from other agencies that were involved, like USAID. My job is to sort through them, which I did, uh, draw some conclusions from that, and we put out our report. And we found that Israel needed to, be, to do a better job uh, on the humanitarian assistance. We've seen improvements since then. We, it's still not sufficient. So there you have it. He <laughs> that, says it right there. That was a master class in deniability. Notice how he's very careful not to say anything where he could wind up getting accused of uh, perjury in later congressional testimony that he may have to give on this subject. He's very, well, they, he keeps it very vague. Well, there were different reports from different parts. He doesn't get specific about what he looked <laughs> at or whose report said what. I had to make a judgment call. He's very careful not to say anything that he can be nailed on. Exactly. Exactly. Two agencies said unmistakably Israel is intentionally yes. blocking life-saving right. aid. And not a little bit. You said there, enough flour to feed one and a half million Gazans yep. for five months. Yep. Israel deliberately blocking that for arbitrary reasons. Those were his two agencies who said that. The racist, you know, die in the wool Zionist hack, Jack Lou, who's the ambassador, just says, I don't agree with that assessment. And Blinken in that news yeah. clip, and according to the report, that's a report. That's, that's a, report. a report that carries equal weight to these two agencies who gave you a thoroughly documented, damning report of how aid is being intentionally blocked. But the ambassador, who we put there for this exact reason, says, I don't agree with that. Based on what? Based on nothing. I don't agree with that. I'm the ambassador. I'm telling you, no. No, they're not intentionally blocking it. He chooses his word over theirs. They, 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 they are fucking criminals. They are criminals. You have people starving to death because of this. And we had an obligation, a legal obligation, according to the Biden administration, according to his own boss, he had a legal obligation to cut off weapons were this to happen, right? Now, if he had the stones to stand up to Netanyahu a little bit, he would say, hey, listen, you have to let more aid in in order for us to send you the weapons. Like, the result of this didn't have to be, obviously, it should have been from our point of view. There's no, there's no arguing that. I don't think anybody's under the impression we feel any differently. There should be an arms embargo anyway. But if Blinken had this, he could have told Netanyahu, you have to let this aid in. Otherwise, we are going to be in a bind, not being able to legally send you weapons. He didn't even do that. Instead, he just right. chose to lie right. and say, right. no, they're not blocking aid, which means they get to continue to block aid because we deny that they're doing it. So if we deny that they're doing it, what reason is there for Israelis not to block aid? And they get the weapons anyway, right? So Blinken, by not, not doing the bare minimum of diplomacy, created the worst of both worlds, where you he let Israel continue to blockade and sent Israel weapons to keep killing people. Uh, and that's a bombshell report. I mean, that is, that is, I mean, the guy is caught red-handed as a fucking criminal liar. Yeah, when you, when you watch, I remember a while ago, there was a clip of him going on stage, Blinken, and um, trying to emote concern. Of yep. course we care about the loss of innocent life. And um, coming out of a directing background, it, it really felt like watching bad acting. That, right. That's when you have an actor who really can't sell it and uh, they just do kind of the kabuki of the emotion. <laughs> you could see, oh, well, people kind of tighten their vocal cords when they're really concerned. So right. I'm going to do that. But it was so obvious he didn't give a fuck about these people you don't you don't get his job if you do 
Right. Um, when occasionally somebody with a conscience is in that job, they're always at odds with the administrations that they serve. Uh, because what is required is to be a genocidal professional liar. Uh, in terms of our relationship as a nation to Israel, it's uh, whenever you have a relationship, whether it's romantic, whether it's business, what, what have you, any transaction where you don't have a red line is one in which you have no leverage and no power. If, if your uh, partner knows you'll never walk out the door, well, you're opening yourself up to a, uh, a lot of abuse, right? Right? Because because why there there's nothing to make somebody pause and say, well, if I do this, they're going to react. That's the relationship we have with Israel. They know there is absolutely nothing they could do that would be a red line, and so they don't set any red lines for themselves. Right. And if you look at what they have done. It is a classic case of the results of dehumanizing the enemy. Any war, to some extent, you have to dehumanize the enemy to murder people, to, to do that. You have to. Israel, it's a step beyond. This is, they have this historic trauma from the Holocaust that they have projected onto these people. These people are Nazis in their minds. These are the people who murdered their ancestors. And uh, there is no limit to what you can do to people like that. Please clap.